This is a graph depicting Metacritic average user scores for each of the major sports titles in the last 20 years. You'll notice each game had a very respectable rating all throughout the early 2000s, yet they all took a similar hit at the same time around the mid 2010s and are now nearing rock bottom in the present time. You might be asking yourself, well, what could be something introduced across all of these games that could be the potential cause for this major dip? And then it suddenly smacks you in the face and we all let a collective side together. But is the idea of Ultimate Team truly the issue, or is it all the factors that are wrapped up into it that are causing all of this turmoil and all of the majorly bad ratings these days? You see, in my opinion, Ultimate Team as a whole is kind of ingenious. It features sports trading card and marketplace that you might find in the real life, but also has things like progression and team building and those types of RPG type of elements that you might find in those types of games, but is also the premier online way to play the game itself in whatever title it might be. Theoretically, Ultimate Team is a complete game on its own, and it's completely separate from the other game modes that you might find in your favorite sports title. It's a game mode that can attract many different types of players to the mode itself and has a ton of different ways to play, keeping you engaged for a very long time. But if it's such a great game mode, why are so many people against it and think it's the major reason why sports games are failing these days? Well, I think there's two big reasons as to why Ultimate Team is showing a different face behind the scenes versus what you might find on the surface. The first one, and arguably the most controversial one, is the in-game transactions that are found within the game mode. Now, converting real-life money for in-game items isn't something that hasn't been done before. The difference is that a lot of games these days are going for more visual-inducing content. You'll pay for things that aren't necessarily going to affect the core gameplay, but maybe it's a cool skin, or maybe it's a nice visual effect, etc, etc. However, Ultimate Team modes do the complete opposite, where you are paying for packs to get a chance at players or items or whatever the case may be, to eventually make your team better, which will make your gameplay better. And this is the biggest issue because effectively, this is the number one suspect for a pay to win game you might not even realize. You see, to give credit to these Ultimate Team modes, their live content team is actually very good from new events to special cards to different things that you can find on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis or whatever the case may be, they actually do some pretty creative things. However, this over time slowly starts to become a bit of an issue. A good player you pick up at the game's launch will slowly but surely become less and less valuable because there are so many different cards, events, and so on that are being created every single day or week. And when there is so much content being released on a daily basis, there's a few options that you have to consider to improve that team. The first is to spend real life money on packs. Now, when you're spending your real life money, you aren't guaranteed to get the player you want. Instead, you're spending money on packs, which have a percent chance of varying quality that you can get in the side of these packs. On the surface level, it seems like a fun game that you have a chance or luck to potentially get something that's really, really good. However, when you dive deeper, you start to notice some of the issues that come with these in-game transactions. Because it is a percentage to get a certain rarity of a different type of player, it's technically a form of luck, which theoretically is a form of gambling. And while that word is typically reserved for something you might find in the Las Vegas Strip, you can do this in any living room, which poses a bit of a problem. Over the years, there have been a ton of talk, not only with packs and ultimate team modes, but loot box type of gambling in general. Is it considered gambling? Is it considered illegal? Or is it okay? And at this time, loot box type of investments seem to be in a bit of a gray area, where that's not technically illegal, albeit probably unethical. There have been a number of lawsuits, with the Netherlands winning one over EA, making them pay 10 million before that was overturned in 2022. And Austria actually won a case against EA, saying that the loot box type of incentive is illegal according to their gambling laws. But at this time, it still is shrouded in a ton of mystery. You would think with that much controversy, EA would try to go a different route and potentially stray away from it, until you read a 2021 report which said that EA Sports received $1.62 billion in revenue strictly from in-game transactions from their Ultimate Team modes. That is a ton of money. 
To put it in an even larger perspective, EA's annual 2021 report said that in-game transactions from the EA Sports Ultimate Team modes generated 30% of their total revenue for the year. That is not EA Sports solely, that is EA as a parent company, featuring big titles like Apex Legends, Star Wars, and Battlefield. EA Sports' Ultimate Team modes generated 30% of the company's revenue. And that is a number that you simply cannot ignore. If you wish to not get ransacked by EA Sports to actually make your team better, you have to go the other route, which is paying in time. Now, Ultimate Team modes give you the ability to generate currency to buy players and upgrade your team. However, the thing that seems most concerning is the amount of time that you have to put in to really compete with these whales that are spending a ton of money. And unfortunately, it feels like Ultimate Team it becomes a second job for a lot of people. You have to spend hours and hours every single day just to keep up with players that are spending money. Sure, it's possible and free to play players are very frequent, but there comes a point where you're trying to become a very competitive player you find yourself on the outside looking in when all these people are simply spending money to get an advantage. It's a real frustration as you either spend a ton of money and contribute to a very greedy business that EA is providing. Not only are you spending $70 every single year, but you're also contributing with in-game transactions that are attributing 30% of the parent company's annual revenue. It's either that or you have to make a deal with the devil to pretty much have a second job of just playing the game that you want to enjoy and having to get on every day just to potentially compete with these people that are spending money certainly is draining and can certainly take away from the enjoyment of potentially your favorite game. Suddenly the game that scratches a lot of people's brains in many different genres is starting to feel a lot more closed doors than what was originally intended. Theoretically, the game mode for everyone has quickly become the game mode for only the most dedicated. And the bottom line is, it just stops being fun after a while. And if you don't want to give in to the cash cow that is Ultimate Team, you find yourself trying to play all the other game modes. Which brings me to my second point, which I think the best way to describe it is the middle child syndrome. I apologize to any middle children out there, but it is the best way to describe it. Middle child syndrome can be defined as the idea that the child that is not born first or last but in the middle is treated differently or isn't given as much attention as the other siblings. While this is considered psychological across the board and is more of a study, I think it's pretty factual when you look at the idea of sports games. You see, before Ultimate Team was out, there was only the modes that you see now. Things like career mode or franchise mode, regular gameplay, training, whatever the case may be, those were all that were out there before Ultimate Team. When Ultimate Team was introduced, suddenly there was another game mode, and this game mode was garnering a lot of attention compared to the other game modes. When its popularity soared in the 2010s and people were making content and videos and reactions to all of their favorite packs and players and you can name it, all of the other game modes, the game modes that have been around since the dawn of time, have been pushed to the side a little bit. When you consider that sports games are being released every single year, there's going to be a time crunch every single time. And then when you see the big older brother of Ultimate Team that's getting all the attention and making all of this money for EA Sports, you know, naturally, you probably are going to see a little bit more attention given to them. It certainly doesn't help that Ultimate Team is generating billions of dollars for your company while Career Mode is really just the sale that you can get from the copy of the game. It certainly doesn't help when you change generations, it feels like we're getting less and less features. When we went from the Xbox 360 and PS3 era, a lot of features were stripped back from the games that were so good in the early 2000s. But then you look at things like the Xbox One PS4 era, even more features feel like they're being stripped away. And now we find ourselves in the new generation and it feels like things are working backwards a little bit in other game modes, but Ultimate Team seems to be progressing every single year. Maybe Ultimate Team isn't getting as much attention or is getting more attention, but it is certainly feels like the other game modes are getting a little bit less attention than what they were getting in previous years. Years that we saw the ratings skyrocketed and were actually seen as good games compared to now. Passion has been replaced by profits. And all of the other game modes, game modes that were making up the core of the game franchise for so long, feel like the misfit toys. Things that used to be good, but as you grow up, things have changed. 
It's unfortunate because these game modes are still very good and are very fun and are a core experience of a sports game genre. But Ultimate Team simply seems to stand heads and tails above all these other game modes. In my opinion, I don't think Ultimate Team is necessarily the biggest issue, but I think there's a true imbalance in the way that things are being developed. Yes, there is a time crunch when you look at a yearly release for these different sports games. But all I ask for is that some of these other game modes, game modes that make up the core experience of sports fans for many years, get a little bit more love these days. I know Ultimate Team is your bread and butter these days, I know it makes a ton of money, but you have to look at the ones that bring the passion for the fans and give a true balanced experience to our favorite game genres. Thanks for watching.